Most people think time is like a river that flows swift and sure in one direction. But I have seen the face of time. And I can tell you, they are wrong. Time is an ocean in a storm. You may wonder who I am and why I say this. Sit down, and I will tell you a tale like none that you have ever heard. Know first that I am the son of Sharam, a mighty king of Persia. On our way to Azad with a small company of men, we passed through India. <coughs> where the promise of honor and glory tempted my father into a grievous error. Help, my son. I think I felt regret as I gazed upon the destruction we had wrought, or at least humility at the speed with which a world can be transformed from a good world into a hell. If you think so, you are mistaken. For in that moment I thought of one thing only, the honor and glory I would bring my father by fighting like a warrior in my first battle. Many men that day sought to win honor and glory on the battlefield, that their king might say to them, as Khosrow said to Rustam, You are the noblest of my warriors. From the moment my sword tasted blood, I knew this would not be my way. I would win my father's praise, not by killing, but by being the first to find the Maharaja's treasure vault and the wonders within.
Shall I continue my story from here the next time we're interrupted? And there it lay, just out of reach. The Dagger of Time. There was a treasure I could carry with pride as a trophy of our victory. If I could only get there. Time to get out. Now. I have brought us honor and glory. <coughs> Your Majesty, 
You promised me my choice of Maharaja's treasures. That dagger! Surely you won't deny the lad a souvenir of his first battle. You may have your choice of all the Maharaja's other treasures. Except that hourglass. That will make a blind gift for the Sultan of Azad when we pass through his city. And some exotic animals for his menagerie. And a dozen slave girls. Yes, that should be enough. I want no animals or maidens harmed until I have chosen. Let it be known, King Sharaman is merciful in victory. Trust not a man who has betrayed his master, nor take him into your own service, lest he betray you too. I learned the truth of this to my sorrow, the day that we arrived in Azad as the Sultan's honored guests. My friend! My friend! Your visit brings joy and honor to my poor and humble dwelling. If only you'd given me time to prepare a proper welcome. The glories of Azad are famed throughout the world. And yet... The best is yet to come. I give you the sands of time. May the friendship between our kingdoms endure as long as time itself. The sand, why does it glow? I can tell you. Inside the hourglass is a marvel that no living man has seen. Alas, only the dagger can unlock the sands of time, and it belongs to a greater one than I. A young prince, dearer to his father than all the wealth of India. Perhaps he will oblige. No! that only by taking into my own dagger the sands that possess them could I liberate them from their monstrous living dead.
I'll start the story from here next time. You think me mad. I can see it by the look in your eyes. You think my story is impossible. Perhaps I am mad. Who would not be driven mad by horrors such as I have lived? But I assure you, every word is true. The guest rooms, where my father, all our entourage, and I should have passed the night lay cold and silent. The sands of time had swept through, stealing life and warmth from everything they touched. And I, who unleashed the cataclysm, had been spared. Were there others like me, who yet clung to life, hiding in fear among the ruins? It did not seem so. Had I really seen her? Or had my senses given way under the burden of horrors too great to bear and conjured up a phantom? Either way, I could not rest until I had found her again. I soon discovered that when I had collected enough sand, the dagger gained the power to stop time. Not for me, but for the enemy I struck. I'll start the story from here next time. Whence came these visions that assaulted me thus like fever dreams? Each time I awoke feeling drained and beaten. And each time, what I had seen came to pass. As if the sands of time were giving me a glimpse into my own future. Is anyone there? I have a feeling I'm not in Azad anymore. What? What just 
happen? That's strange. Same words. From now on, I trust no one but myself. Run! Go back to the reception hall. Wait for me there. Go! left India, she had been there. In the desert, I had felt her dark eyes upon me. Now, here she was again. She and I, the only two survivors. Did I say two? Excuse me, we were three. I did not understand the meaning of what I had just seen, but I knew, with a certainty I could not explain, that those winged creatures had a master. The man who had tricked me into opening the hourglass now had his prize, and for some unknown purpose coveted the dagger as well, would stop at nothing to possess it. Well, I would give him what he sought. I would plunge it into his foul and treacherous heart.
after a time, I began to realize why the museum wanted it so badly. I'll start the story from here next time. <laughs>